Hello friends and strangers, it's the Rat King here and I'm going to work right now actually but uh, there's a swap meet because I work at a Harley dealership and they ever have, they're having a swap meet out front on the, on the, the porch uh, the, this covered area in front of the dealership and I'm riding Uko the Thunder God and I actually have two gas tanks on this bike right now because I'm going to try and sell one of them yeah, I don't know. It's so big, you probably can't even tell what's going on down there. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> it's the gas tank that I dished on the channel and then put Bondo in. So, uh, yeah. We'll see if anyone wants to buy it. I bought it just for fun to like dish it, practice and whatnot. And I figured I'd, be, I'd have some friend with a Lowrider S who might be interested because it is a Lowrider S gas tank. All right, I just got off work, and uh, as you can see, I did not sell that gas tank it's still on here. So yeah, I got my. Uh, gas tank on there well both of them you know didn't sell it but that's okay you know i'll find some way to get rid of it or friend who needs one you know some guy was talking to me saying it'd be really cool if you painted like a scene in here like like just like on the inside of this like like a mountain some birds flying by or whatever you know motorcycle i don't know you know what i'm saying anywho yeah i uh, didn't sell that but i did buy something cool oh, and i gave out a bunch of stickers so that's always fun i got this here this bag which uh, if you look, it'll fit on my swing arm, not too bad. Shake around a bunch, you know. But uh, I don't have the straps to do that right now, so I just got it on my shoulder bag right here, eh? <laughs> All right, in any case, I gotta get home. I don't live too far, so I should survive, you know. You know, you guys know the drill. Am I leaving anything? Nope. All right, oh, gotta tie my shoes, though. All right. Good to go! Or good enough, eh? Hello again. It's been like two days. Uh, I recorded uh, me riding home from work with that gas tank and then uh, yesterday I had a bunch of stuff to do. But today I'm going to be putting some new cams in here. So uh, yeah, I'll show you guys how to do that if you have a blast. I mean, it's pretty, pretty easy to do. But uh, yeah, let's get going, eh? So before we can open up the uh, cam chest where the cams are, we have to make sure that the valves are uncompressed and because uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get that because there's so much pressure on them. So you got to take this off because there's some push rods in there and the rocker box and the springs and all that. So you got to take that off so that there's no pressure holding those down. So to get it into top dead center, I'm just going to push it forward while it's in gear and I'll feel when it's starting the compression stroke because I'll be compressing a bunch of air and it'll be really hard to push. It's hard to push. There we go. I'm gonna take the spark plug out so it won't be compressing the air because the air will just be shooting out there and it'll be real easy to push then. Before I get into those cams and everything, I need to pull off the rocker cover. I can see there's no pressure on the springs, so I'm gonna pull these bolts out very carefully. dripping lots of oil out of there, which is fine, I just, you know, loosened it. So I got this thing loose with enough play that I know it won't be hitting the valves and all that. And now I'm gonna be pulling off this ignition cover and then pulling out my ignition module and the rotor 
and then after that I can just take this cover off and get to the cams. Okay, this rotor here, it tells the ignition module where the engine is and when it needs to spark. I just need to pull that out and then I can pull that whole thing out. That is actually uh, one of the cams right there that you're looking at. It's just the end of it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I gotta loosen the bolts around the perimeter of that cover and pull it off. All right, I'm pulling this off. And I'm gonna push on this cam as I pull this cover off so that uh, I don't pull the cams out with the cover because that happens sometimes, it's kind of annoying. go there's my cams and all that stuff nice and easy and uh, this gasket looks good and since I'm a cheap moron I'm gonna just reuse it cuz uh, yeah what the heck all right I'm gonna put it in neutral and rotate the shaft until these are all lined up this makes it way easier to time it same way on sportsters if you get them so that they're all in the right place and then pull them out then when you're putting the new ones in it'll be a heck of a lot easier because they'll already be all in the right spot. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. All right. I'm gonna pull those out. So you gotta put this one in first. Well, on a blast you do. Uh, sportsters and stuff have more cams in them. You just gotta lift the lifter out of the way, put the new one in. And then I'm gonna point the, um, the mark towards the other cam, well, towards where the other cam is about to be. God dang it. I gotta clean this thing back off. Okay, let's hope I don't drop this thing again. All right. All right, let's see if that's right. Ooh, yeah. So the line there on this guy lines up with the dot right there. And then these two dots line up over there. So yeah, it's in there. Should be good. Yeah, starting to put it back together. Uh, this thing, you gotta make sure it's indexed the same way it was. Uh, I happen to know where it was, um, cause I have little marks on it, but uh, otherwise you gotta just do your timing again, which is not very hard to do actually, so it wouldn't be a big deal, but. Uh, something just something that you would have to do. You know what? I'm actually not going to tighten that in all the way. I'm going to time it again just because it couldn't hurt and it might gain me a little bit of power or whatever the heck. So I'm going to not put the cover on for that yet. All right. As for the rest of it, though, uh, yeah. Tight. I'll tighten back down all the bolts up there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'll tighten those back down. I just pushed it forward a foot or two because I needed to get make sure it was back at a uh, top dead center. So, yeah. You know it's true love when I uh, pull out my actual uh, torque wrench because I care so much about this bike, <laughs> which is hilarious because it really is a piece of junk, and even I'll admit that. But nonetheless, I like this piece of junk. There we go. All right. It's not all back together, but uh, I got the rocker box on all the way except for the cover and this thing I left the cover off because I'm gonna time it. So I'm gonna just push it forward and listen to see if there's any clicking or anything from the valves hitting the pistons or anything like that. Just make sure it's all good to go. And if it is, then I'm gonna put on the cover and then I'm gonna time the thing. All right, 
I just did it a couple times to be sure. But uh, yeah, I watched the uh, valves go up and down. So I know that it's all actuating everything. And it didn't hang up anywhere. So uh, I'm feeling good about that. I'm gonna go uh, put that cover on now. I got the bike back together. Got the rocker box on, got the PCV valve in there. It's all back together except for the ignition timing. I haven't timed it yet. So uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, one thing you have to do for sure is remove this plug in here. That allows me to see the timing mark on the crankshaft. So uh, first I'm gonna take that out and then I'll catch up with you in a second. Gee, that thing's in there tight. Well, okay. Whew. So I know that it's roughly in the right spot just because uh, the way it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the bike on and push it forward until that right LED light lights up. And that'll tell me that it's on the compression stroke and it's close to where it needs to be. And then once I do that, I'm going to adjust it to make sure it's exactly uh, on top dead center and then I'll time it from there. So first I'm just going to turn it on and push it until that light lights up. And obviously it's in gear right now otherwise when I pushed it it wouldn't be spinning the engine so I have it in fifth gear just so that it moves real slow. All right. All right so as you can see there the red lights on which means it's close to where it needs to be. So I'm going to look inside that area where I pulled the plug out and I'm going to look in there for a line. I'll, tr I'll try and show you the line when I get it there but uh, it's going to be kind of hard to do because it's way in there and my exhaust is in the way. All right I just pushed it around a little bit and I can now see the time mark. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that but there's a line and, uh, on the flywheel in there. It's just going up. Yeah. You want that to be centered and then you can uh, check out your timing. So as you can see, this red light's on. The way you time it, you, uh, oh, I need to loosen these things just a bit. So for the stock dynamic timing, you then twist this thing until it just barely shuts off. So there, just until it just shuts off the light. And then you tighten it back down. And that's how you do stock uh, dynamic or sorry, static, not, not dynamic timing. Dynamic timing would be while the bike is running, which is not what I'm doing right now. Now uh, you can go put that cover back on and uh, yeah, good to go. All right, let's go see if it starts up now. I got the timing plug back in, you know, like I was saying all that together. Here we go. There we are, we're in neutral. Pull the choke out. There we go, all right. smoke coming off here because uh, there's oil that dripped out of the uh, rocker box when I had it open. Also I'm gonna need to fix my exhaust. It, uh, it started cracking so I tried to just weld over it and uh, I had too much heat and I bored a hole in it and then I welded back over it. Now it doesn't look so pretty. <laughs> the first time I did it it looked great and now it's like not nearly as good. So uh, I'll definitely need to take care of that. I'll probably just chop a section out and put in a new piece of steel which I have enough sitting around so that's not a huge concern but definitely something that I'm gonna need to have to do. Also since I changed the cams out the tuning on the carburetor probably won't be super good. Uh, I'll probably need to adjust that again but I'm gonna go on some rides and stuff make sure that's all good before uh, before I go on any long trips. Also I'm sad to say my front motor mount the isolator up here is starting to deteriorate it's actually cracking the rubber a little so I'm gonna need to get another new one of those that's a huge pain. That's one of the flaws, I think, on this bike, is that the, the front motor mount keeps failing on me. I mean, it hasn't failed, really, but it's not doing great. You know what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, I'll need to take care of that. But uh, I feel comfortable just riding a little bit around town. I won't be going anywhere soon, anywhere far, at least, uh, on this bike with the, with the motor mount like that. 
I should have a new one here pretty soon, but you know, that's life. Yeah, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do, uh, leave me a like and, uh, you know, subscribe. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Can't wait to see how this thing ends up running, what I'll need to do to tune it and all that. Shouldn't be too hard. I like my carburetors. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll see you guys later.